With thousands of satellites launched into the orbit, our ocean of space is becoming more and more congested. In 1957, the Soviet Union launched the first satellite, Sputnik 1, marking the start of a human activity in space. In the 1960s, the space exploration was still limited, with satellites primarily used for scientific and military purposes. The orbital environment remained mostly empty. In the 70s, the expansion of satellite communication began. Satellites become crucial for television and telecommunication, leading a notable increase in the number of active satellites, especially in the geostationary orbits. By the 2000s, the number of active satellites had accelerated to over 1,000. The commercialization of space along with the globalization drove the demand for more and more satellites. In 2010, space debris become a real threat. Collisions and breakups began creating fragments, turning the orbital environment more hazardous and making it harder to maintain safe satellite operations. In the 2020s, commercial constellations like Starlink began to take off. Private companies launched thousands of satellites to provide global connectivity, causing a sharp increase in orbital congestion. Today, in 2024, there are over 11,000 satellites in the orbit, and the number continues to rise as the demand for connectivity and data grows globally. But the problem is not just the number of satellites. It's actually making space less sustainable for the future. Right, I, I don't think I've met anyone in the space world who's not tracking the risk of space debris. Um, but every single one of them will happily put on the blinders and proceed to go plan, fund, build, and launch new constellations. Because we have to, right? That, that is where we have to go to kind of, again, go capture the opportunity of space. We realized very early on that there's a need to go off and go support those future architectures through additional capabilities, partially intelligence, you know, what's where, where is it going, where is it going to be, uh, and partially, what do you do about it when you actually figure out where something is and you've just you've decided you have a mission or a, or an objective and how do you go off and go execute on it uh, safely this is the story of scout space and their solution is making satellites autonomous we're out building the eyes and the brains of future space operators so we look at ourselves as the originators of the future data ecosystem that supports scale Imagine these cameras as dark beacons in the sea of darkness, enabling satellites to make autonomous real-time decisions with extreme precision. And for that, we need both the ability to sense and the ability to process and prosecute based on that sensory information. That's why we describe ourselves as the, or describe ourselves as the, the eyes and the brains of future architectures, because without the ability to see and the ability to do something, we don't have an infrastructure today that allows for scale. So they actually have three different products, Sparrow, Raven, and Owl. Sparrow is a compact optical system for close range operations in low earth orbit, or LEO, focused on relative navigation and satellite inspection services. Raven is a multi-camera optical payload for situational awareness and inspection in low earth orbit, including rendezvous and docking operations. And then comes OWL. It's a gimbaled long-range optical sensor for space domain awareness, designed for object detection and monitoring in LEO, GEO, and lunar orbits, providing long-range space situational awareness. Yeah, so our OWL uh, sensor, it's about 35 to 45 kilograms, uh, depending on the design variant. Um, we're building a family of solutions. So this is a 150 millimeter, 250 millimeter, and 350 millimeter aperture, right? So that's the size of the, of the opening. Uh, it's a large, performant, uh, capable sensor designed primarily for our national security customers. Um, its job is to go off and go find the first indications of an object at extremely long distances. It can certainly also perform some resolved imagery uh, missions at different distances, i.e. kind of taking high fidelity, high accuracy images of objects to understand what they're composed of and what maybe they're doing. OWLs are dual axis gimbaled uh, sensor designed largely for geo and cislunar missions. The main distinguishing feature of this product is the capture of photons on local plane arrays. Rays of light or photons travel through the space, each carrying information. These photons approach the sensor's grid, ready to be captured. The sensor's grid start capturing these photons. The sensor captures each photon precisely, ensuring no data is lost. The captured photons are then organized on the grid for processing. The sensor processes the light data to generate actionable information for precise decisions. Space Surveillance Network, the SSN, operated by the U.S. government, and U.S. government operates telescopes and lasers and all sorts of fun stuff on the ground looking up, and they operate a bunch of satellites up in different parts of space looking at stuff in space as well. We were able to show with our, our partners at Delta II 
was that we can take down the revisit rates from two hours to 50 minutes. So these technologies allow satellites to detect the threats and change their trajectory accordingly, avoiding all kinds of collisions and ensuring operational safety. The key advantage is autonomous intelligence. Scout space system helps satellites make decisions independently. So we want to go out and start to build the thing that people don't today know they need. I think the future of space is not just about exploration anymore. It's about creating an infrastructure which is safe and sustainable for our future. Scout space is paving the way for space environment where we can innovate without fear. We, we want to go off and go build the next thing, and that's the autonomy story. So we are out, again, actively raising to support those two things, right? We want to go build demos to go capture business on the government front, and then we want to go off and go build autonomy solutions because that's that's where commercial's going, right? That's, that's the future of true commercial space needs autonomy and sensing solutions, and we want to be in a position to go provide it, even though those solutions aren't needed today. As we send more and more and more satellites in the space, it's becoming evident that we need to be able to set up a good infrastructure which is scalable, which is sustainable, and which is secure for the future of space exploration to continue. And I think it's companies like Scout that's going to fix that problem for our future. I hope this episode has given you a new perspective to understand our space. Thumbs up if you like it, and I'll talk to you soon in the next one. Peace.